Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The summer and peace of the rest of you. One more game within the same day. Black heart sign of black in again asking you to hit that uh, share button first and then to decide on the like or the subscribe buttons later on based on the content because the message is more important than the messenger. And this message is about um, the misconception of the warrior class, but it's also about the misconception of the non warrior classes. The misconceptions of our understandings, the misconceptions of the terminology, period. First thing we got to understand is that Edward Anderson's right, Tariq Nasheed is wrong about one thing. Thug niggas are not the warrior class. Pookie and Ray Rays, who are largely blue collar and they require skills that don't uh, bring a lot of social prestige, but they do earn, and even a comfortable living, are not the warrior class, but they don't pretend to be. They're workers, and nobody pretends that they are. They are the working class, but they're not the warrior class. And that's okay. We're not a people with an army in the first place. So what are we talking about warrior class? The closest to a warrior class are those of us who are veterans of somebody else's, namely our oppressor's military system. With training from them. So how are you going to be a warrior class per se? That's our warrior class, but it's not really ours. They've made sure that any warrior class with melanin is not ours. So we can't sit up and pretend anymore like there is some sort of warrior class for black folks in the United States and in many parts of the Americas. There is no warrior class. It's not our fault. Somebody else did it, but it doesn't exist. But the other thing is that we've got the term wrong. We don't even fully understand lame. What is that? We are mistaken even in our understanding of that. See, a square could just be someone who generally goes by the book and is thorough. A lame is different. Lame is somehow disabled or crippled. That's the literal meaning of the word. We sit up here and we start assuming, I mean, even LAR movement did this. We assume that square dealing or trying to be thorough also means that somebody is lame. Or that certain interest in comic books also mean that somebody is lame. And that's not the case. Lame is beyond uh, what we even consider to be lame. It's far worse. The literal meaning of the word lame. We've taken the worst terms and applied them to normal people. So our very understanding can't be correct. We've taken, ab we've taken normality and, and mediocrity and applied it applied uh, terms to it that actually mean outright weakness and disability. How are we going to fully understand that? We're pretty much saying that, in a nutshell, we're pretty much saying that everything that is not the worst stereotype somebody else can dredge up of us is weak and unworthy. Even our vocabulary sucks. And I'm not going to front. See, the reason ain't no more Malcolms today is not only because of his courage, but it is also because of his education. He didn't spend a day in the university until he was already Malcolm X about to beat Malik Shabazz and he was debating. Then he was killing people with PhDs, but he taught himself to read in prison. Most of you won't let anybody teach you how to read in, in school. You in elementary, middle, and high school, and you know the kind of hell you gave your English teachers. It's fine that we have our own English. I don't ever want us to lose it. But the fact is that many of us, when we have the opportunity to learn to read and write, like somebody literate, like somebody with half a brain in our first language, whatever it is, we gave them crap. I know in the English speaking world, well, black folk can't write for nothing. I mean, it sucks. And I'm not just talking about black Americans, I'm talking about period. And a lot of you like to say, well, the way that I text and the way that we uh, write on social media is different. Well, the problem is that you write like this, you get used to it, then when you have to write something formal, you start effing up. Or you come to somebody who does know how to write because they always do it the way they were supposed to. So simply because I can write correctly in English, I make extra money proofreading, not because I live in a country where English is a very distant second language. I make money proofreading things written by native English speakers. So the truth be told, we can't really have discussions with these new terms because we don't understand most of the terms we, we use and we don't even realize the psychological effects of them on top of that we can't even spell, can't punctuate. You ain't the only people in the world like that. I'm sitting up here teaching English now in a Gulf nation. I just told one of my students last night when he started messaging me, Dr. Black, 
He wouldn't punctuate to save his life. He didn't capitalize or punctuate, just type it in English. Now I can say English is a second language. He has an excuse many of you don't have. But it gets worse. Even though he has this excuse that many of you don't have, the fact is, I said to him a long time ago, I said to all of them, punctuate, at the very least, put a full stop at the end of a sentence. That's more, punctu that's more important than anything else. We'll start with that, just that. Well, the reason they don't do it is because they don't do it in their own language, even though they have periods in Arabic as well, in question marks. Even though they got them, they just don't. They just won't do it. Just, no, mm -mm, no punctuation. So they're sending each other messages on Telegram, WhatsApp, Instagram, Snapchat, sometimes Facebook, no punctuation. And they're not even typing half the time in correct Arabic. So guess what happens? Slang, just like us. So we're not the only ones doing this by any means, but we are the only ones who have to discuss something as broken as we have to discuss it because the very basic mechanisms by which men and women choose each other are broken in the African-American community, in Western black communities in general. And hell, even to a certain extent back home in the motherland, you got some of these women talking about, I want me a thug. In Liberia, that was a problem. I remember Liberian women telling me about her niece talking about she likes thugs. I said, what is a thug? T-H-U-G, oh, you mean thugs, I got you. Yeah, yeah, okay. She wanted them, huh? Yeah. The very basic mechanism, and that is because of an exaggeration of violence. Being honest and square dealing means that you are lame. That means you're disabled and crippled. That's what that means. That means you're weak. That means everybody can do whatever they want to do to you. That's what that means. So we're sitting up here and assuming it because somebody's not the absolute worst a uh, negative stereotype somebody can dream up, a caricature of a white supremacist stereotype of black people, that, that this means they're not even, they ain't even got no testosterone, they're not even a man. You're defining manhood by somebody else's negative stereotype of you, your enemy's negative stereotype of you. And you're, and you expect people to, to listen when you start talking, like you know what you're talking about. As a community, we don't know what we're talking about talking about a warrior class. A warrior class uh, has a possessive attached to it. Who's warrior class? We don't have one that, that, that we can say is our warrior class. The thugs are not. The thugs are not our warrior class. They're not fighting white supremacy. They're fighting black unity and nothing else. The thugs are doing things to the rest of the community that um, very few people do to their communities, but they do do them in their communities. However, in our case, the thugs uh, do a lot more damage, plenty more damage. In reality, every community has them, but this is where it gets even worse. In our community, the thugs are celebrated. That's it. I'm going to F you because you got that thug appeal. Now your cousin over there, he ain't no thug, so he lame. Right off the bat, it's this false dichotomy. Thug, lame, thug, lame. You're either violent and somebody's negative stereotype, or you're lame and that's it. And there's no, there's no middle ground, there's nothing normal. And this is your problem. And it's reflected in the way that we write, but, that, but even the bad writing is a symptom of a bigger problem. We think that by nature we're not supposed to be any sort of thorough at anything. We think that by nature we're supposed to automatically be failures, simply based on our DNA. Because we think this way, we choose our mates this way. And I can't sit up here and say that this is something on the part of the men, because the men are largely choosing what's available. The women are choosing, the women are choosing based on these negative stereotypes. But we don't have these things we're talking about, to be honest with you. We have very few that are actually lame, and we don't have a warrior class to begin with. Most of us fall somewhere in the middle, but we don't even know how to properly describe in English or any other language what these middle grounds and levels are. And one of the reasons is because when you're in your class for your first language, namely English, you won't let anybody teach you anything because you're a teenager and you're black, and you believe from the TV that you're just a nigga. So since you believe that, you act it out when you become grown, you still don't understand. You become grown, then you start to understand a little bit, but you still don't understand that you're going to have to go back and kill the person you used to be as a teenager because that nigga ain't shit. 
I hope that this has been a benefit. Black Art, sign of Blackout, and as alaykum.